the second paragraph, we go on to build the interest. And that is, we give some details about the product. We introduce the product and some of the information. This will help build interest. We try to be clear about what's good for, 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 from the product, what's good, and what the product can do to help you. So let's look at some examples here. You can see the paragraph is kind of long. Second par the second example also, kind of long, isn't it? Why are these so long? Because they're telling a lot of details. They're using this chance to build up the interest. So here we introduce the product. We tell what the product does. We give some features of the product. It works 24 hours a day. It's hidden. There's no other product like it. Uh, here we have another example here and we say this has something really special and this thing has in-depth information. So these are the features, basically a list of features. And when you give the list of features, what you're doing is you're building the interest. So paragraph number two is tell the details of the product, try to stay interesting, and let the person feel, hmm, yeah, this is interesting. This is something that is good for me. Now, of course, if the product is not related to me at all, you can tell me the details, but I won't care, right? So that's part of the key of sales is you cannot sell something to someone if they're not interested at all, right? You know, I'm a man, you cannot sell a dress to me because I don't wear a dress, right? If you're a woman and I wanna sell you a tie, it's not helpful that I tell you all the features of a tie because you're not going to buy if you don't wear a tie. So you cannot, you know, do the impossible. But the idea is you send sales letters to businesses or to customers, consumers or businesses that already have a chance to buy or a chance to use your product. And so here, paragraph number two, you do your best to tell the details of the product to build that interest. Okay, then we move on to paragraph number three. And in paragraph number three, we're going to encourage them, encourage the receiver to buy, of course, to take action. Of course, the action should be to buy. So you need to tell them what do they need to do in order to buy. And you need to make it easy for them to respond or to get more information. And of course, you can do something extra, like maybe give a price discount or a special sale price or buy one, get one free kind of thing. So here in paragraph three, what we have is the define action and also the create the desire. That is, I'm interested now, I really want to spend my money and tell me how to do it, C and D. So if we look at a couple examples here, we can see that we're talking about the product and we go on to say the product is really good and then look at this piece here, right here beginning. Can you afford to pass up this chance? We are making it even harder to pass up by letting you in on a special introductory offer. If you send us the enclosed order form, we will cut the theft proof system price by 25%. So there's the special offer. That special offer is helping to see, create desire. We cannot continue this incredible offer for long, so it's limited, limited, right? Now inside the letter we may include some information or inside the email we may include a button, right? Click here, right? to buy or a link, an HTTP link maybe, and you can go to the website and buy there. So that is the D, define the action. Let's look at this second example here. So again, we say a couple positive things. We ask the consumer to maybe buy right away. And here we give a 40% 
off, you see? 40% off. So that right there is helping to see, create the desire. Now remember, you cannot do the impossible. If I give you 40% off, but you're not interested to buy anyway, because you're not gonna use the product, this doesn't help. But the idea is, if someone is interested, if someone is interested, then A, paragraph one, attract attention. B, paragraph two, build the interest, tell them the detail, and C, here, we create the desire by maybe giving something special, like a sale price or a special offer. Okay, inside your book, there's a number of examples you can follow. And again, remember the letter format, right? Up here we have the heading, and then down here we have the opening, and then down here we have the body, and down here we have the closing. And the heading is, who is this letter from? And the opening is, who is this letter to? And the body is the information, of course, in this case, three paragraphs. And then the closing is also, who is it from? Okay, good luck with your sales. For a sales letter, let's try to do an easy assignment. Let's just go for 100 words using your QBL software. Let's look at the assignment that's inside of your ebook, inside the sales letter chapter, exercise C. Now, usually when you write a sales letter, you need to be very familiar with the product. You need to know a lot. So maybe you don't know a lot about some products, so let's just pretend that you're going to sell something you know well, like something you're wearing, some clothes, a shirt or pants or some shoes or something special that you wear, so some clothes. So let's go ahead and pretend that you're a company and your company's name is Acme. You can use the address and information that's in the book and other places for Acme. You need to write a sales letter to this person, Mr. or Mrs. Wright, at 300 Oak Lane, Uptown, Pennsylvania. So make sure that you get that correct for who you're sending the letter to. Again, 100 words, not too hard, but let's try to make it straightforward, keep it simple, and try your best to follow the ABCD rule. Good luck with your sales.